Hello everyone and welcome to another really awesome game uh, from the 23rd European Team Championship that uh, well basically shows us Alireza's uh, run to the top uh, of the uh, rating mountain. Uh, he's continuing to uh, get these uh, <laughs> victories from seemingly completely drawn positions and that's something that has often been said of Magnus. Uh, they said that Magnus will win like maybe 6 or 7 out of 10 drawn endgames and uh, th th there are very few players who could... Uh, do do something like this uh, against uh, strong competition. Uh, so this game uh, perfectly illustrates uh, the difference between a, a grandmaster and and a, so, sort of a super grandmaster. Even though that's not uh, a real title, but um, you know. Uh, if you're, let's say, between 25 and 2600, that is much, much different than if you are 2700 or, or above, as you'll see in this game. So let's see what happens. Alireza has the white pieces and he opens with e4. Uh, we have c5. He's playing against the Greek grandmaster Dimitrios Mastrovasilis, uh, board one uh, for the Greek team. Uh, we have knight to f3, e6, sorry about that. Uh, and... Uh, uh, Alireza, of course, strikes in the center with d4. Uh, we have captures, captures, knight to c6, and knight to c3 now. So this is the Taimano variation of the Sicilian, and queen c7, the Bostrikov uh, variation. We've seen this many times. Uh, we have bishop to e2 by Alireza, and now a6. Taking away the b5 square from uh, white's, uh, white's pieces, you do not want to allow some knight uh, to b5 move to dislodge the queen from c7. Uh, and here, usually, white will just castle. Bishop to e3 is also a playable move f4 is a very nice move but the move that Alireza plays is a very rare one uh, and it's uh, only been played a handful of times so knight captures on c6 is the move b captures uh, and now queen to d3 uh, the idea between uh, behind this weird line is that Alireza wants to play queen d3 queen g3 trade off the queens uh, and uh, just go straight for the end game hopefully getting uh, after the black queen captures on g3 getting a nice uh, semi-open h file for his rook so let's see what happens here it's, a, it's still a known position for example in 2019 in uh, grand chester in um, uh, croatia in the blitz tournament uh, alexander grishchuk had this position against yanni pomishi where d5 was played that game ended in a draw but here we have knight to f6 and now uh, there is one game where bishop to d2 was played, but Alireza goes for his uh, plan, queen to g3, uh, and it is now as of move 9 that we have a completely new game. Uh, so let's see how uh, black continues. Black says, all right, I'm uh, perfectly uh, fine with, with trading queens here. Uh, we have queen captures, h captures, and now d5. Uh, of course, you do not want to pawn uh, remaining backwards uh, on d7. Maybe if white gets e5 in, could be very unpleasant. So this definitely makes sense, and black can be very happy with his position. Alireza trades on d5. We have captures, captures, and now bishop to f4. So nicely continuing development, preparing to castle queenside, and black plays bishop to b4. If he can capture on c3, mess up Alireza's pawn structure here on the queen side, could be very good for him. Then Alireza will have three pawn islands, where black only will have two. Uh, and here, bishop to e5. Now, the bishop guards the knight, and this is now a, a very strong piece. We have king to e7. Black says no need to castle here, we just want to get our rook into the game. Uh, but for the moment, you can't really move this rook, because if you move it, we're just going to capture the knight, uh, and then pick up the, the pawn on h7. So here, we have g4, and black goes bishop to b7. Continuing development, the bishop is very nicely placed on this long diagonal and a3 now. Uh, Alireza would be very happy now if bishop captures on c3 is played then he would be the one uh, with the bishop pair. So bishop back to d6 offering a trade of bishops here and Alireza grabs it with bishop captures king captures and now g5 grabbing more space and dislodging this knight. Uh, we have knight to d7 and now comes queen side castles and uh, okay it's a pretty equalish position but uh, you know uh, as they say of equalish positions, it's only equalish if you play uh, the absolute best move uh, at, uh, uh, you know, at, at every move. So here, black plays h6. He, he wants to get his rook into the game somehow, but this uh, h7 uh, weakness uh, will always be here. So he starts with h6, uh, which, um, uh, you know, um, uh, alleviates the pressure a little bit, but uh, the downside of it is that he's left with three pawn islands. So here, Alireza captures, we have rook captures, rook captures, captures on h6, g captures on h6, and now uh, g3. It's a very important move, you do not want this g2 pawn uh, being a target here, so g3 uh, is uh, very nicely played, and also if the rook comes to g8, you don't have to worry about rook doing any damage along the g file. Black grabs more space here, he plays f5, e5 is uh, 
coming next and now uh, Alereza has to figure out how to uh, how to get his rook into the game now rook to h1 again this would uh, wouldn't really be uh, all that impressive uh, because d4 then attacks the knight and uh, the, the rook so you know not the greatest of moves you don't lose anything because rook d1 pins the pawn uh, but then e5 you only you know you only help a black develop so instead we have rook to d4 now alireza has some ideas of rook to h4 going after the h6 pawn but also rook to b4 going after the bishop on b7 so uh, definitely the the rook gains more activity we have knight to f6 and now not going for rook h4 right away first rook to b4 attacking the bishop king to c7 defending the bishop and only now rook to h4 we go after the h6 pawn and black defends it with rook to h8 and it doesn't seem like uh, white has uh, all that much here uh, we have f3 uh, it's a very nice move again the bishop, the pawn is nicely protected so you don't have to worry about d4 at any point and also you take away these uh, squares from the from the knight on f6 we have e5 uh, and here you can see how black is controlling a lot of squares here. And uh, someone said, um, uh, I was uh, checking out the, the live coverage at, at this point. Uh, someone said that uh, if Alireza had this position with black, everyone would be saying like, oh yeah, black is much better here. Look at all the all the space that he's controlling. But as Alireza is white here, uh, they, they weren't really sure of uh, how, how impressive black's position was. Uh, but uh, it, it, it is very nice. So here Alireza uh, goes knight to a4. d4 is coming. So... Uh, you do not want this to come with tempo but also you want to play knight to c5 this will attack the bishop it will add uh, more pressure to the pawn on a6 and also you will have this uh, e6 square maybe available for your knight could also come in very handy so a5 and uh, not allowing this pawn to be a target on a6 and now knight to c5 attacking the bishop and the bishop to c6 now of course you do not want to give up this strong bishop uh we have f4 by alireza now trying to trade off um uh, some pawns here and also you do not want black to have this massive pressure in the center so you want black either to capture or to advance the pawn or you will uh, capture on e5 if black doesn't capture so black advances the pawn this is probably the best uh, but now what you've done is that yes you you have a pass pawn but also uh, Alereza won the d4 square for his knight so he he goes for it knight to b3 uh, attacks the pawn on a5 and also prepares to shift the knight to d4 so king b6 activating the king a little bit more defending the pawn and now knight to d4 again putting pressure on the bishop here and on the f5 pawn and now uh, here we have bishop to d7 now, this bishop will now be nicely controlling the knight on d4 uh, but the f5 pawn will be uh, will be a, a weakness for uh, for for quite some time so here we have bishop to h5 and this is uh, where black really has to uh, think about what what to do here the bishop obviously wants to come to f7 and put more pressure on, on this pawn and it's not going to be easy to defend you always have to be careful if some like king here then you can maybe play knight b3 check then the a5 pawn becomes weak so a lot of weaknesses in black's camp and uh, do you capture the bishop or do you allow bishop to f7 now also bishop to g6 might be an idea uh, so uh here black played rook to g8 black said all right you capture what you want i'm gonna capture on g3 and then my rook and my pass pawn uh, should be enough to at least secure a draw if not more however capturing the bishop was also very nice for example if knight captures an h5 rook captures there's this very tricky move king to c5 now the point here is that you're attacking the knight and now for example if knight captures an f5 you capture here and after rook captures you play rook g8 and now you will win this pawn so we would see some like rook h5 going after the h6 pawn we would see captures captures and now for example a4 and black is down a pawn but with the king uh, being so active with the rook being so active with the pass pawn being so close to promotion uh we would have to say that black uh, black should be better here uh but instead okay we we have rook to g8 going after the g3 pawn and now bishop to f7 uh, but now it's a little bit different now bishop to f7 comes with tempo the rook is attacked and you don't have time for king to c5 and also you do not have time to grab the pawn here if you grab the pawn just rook captures on h6 and how are you saving this knight the knight and king are uh, on the same uh, on the same file if you play king c5 attack the knight hoping to trade just knight b3 check and we're gonna pick up the knight uh, uh, on the next move so instead rook to g7 attacking the bishop and now bishop to e6 uh, now we're uh, putting pressure on this bishop but what we're really doing is going after the f5 pawn that's the uh, real weakness in black's position the, the backwards uh, f5 pawn 
uh, or, or rather the, the base of the pawn chain. So bishop captures an e6. We have not knight captures an e6, but a nice efficient to a rook captures an h6. And now look at these uh, pieces on the sixth rank uh, aligned with uh, with the black king. So what do you do here? There's only one good move for black. We have to play bishop to d7. The bishop here is uh, very useful controlling the knight on d4, and we have to give back the piece this way. Rook captures an f6 with check a king to c5, and now again we don't want to capture here if we if we capture then we just trade everything captures 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 and captures and we already said that black should not have any problems here even though he's down a pawn his position is extremely active so instead after king c5 alireza goes knight b3 check now puts pressure on the a5 pawn as well uh, and how do you play this well uh, if you try to defend the pawn with king to b5 the problem is there's this a4 move uh, and now you can't capture this um, if you capture knight c5 check picks up the bishop so after this a4 check you would have to move the king let's say king c4 now we're gonna capture on a5 with check and after king b4 even knight to c6 with check but now this is much different captures captures we're gonna play king captures on a4 and now rook d6 and you can see that uh, after let's say rook captures on g3 rook captures on d5 uh, you are much much better here you cannot defend the f5 pawn and the king uh, well uh, has no problems of, of stopping the, the e3 pawn the black king is so far away from the action uh, this should be winning for white. Uh, so instead, after knight to b3 check, king to c4 right away was played, uh, and now Alireza grabs the a5 pawn with check. So knight captures on a5, king to d4, and now rook to d6. And again, uh, we have a, a position where black has to really, really uh, uh, appreciate what he has, and you know, not uh, cling to what uh, what he might have. And here. Uh, of course, uh, you're putting pressure on the bishop, you're putting pressure on this pawn, and uh, it's not easy for uh, for black to figure this out. But there is a move, and move king to e3 uh, really allows black to, you know, try and create something. You give up the d5 pawn, and you play king f2, and now you're threatening e3, e2, and e1, and it would be very difficult for, for white to stop this. You would have to play knight to b3, and then after e3, knight to c5, uh, and now the point is uh, that e2 doesn't work. If you play e2, we just play knight to d3 check, and now we cover the d1 square with the knight. And now after the king moves, uh, of course, rook to e5 stops promotion, and now we just enjoy our pass pawns. This would be winning for white. So after knight to c5, what you would have to do is just move the bishop, for example, bishop to b5, and now the game continues. Let's say rook e5, we're going to play rook captures on g3, and black has excellent chances here, uh, even though he's down two pawns, but uh, it's uh, really you know a, a crazy crazy position uh, so this is what black should have gone for this king to e3 is just uh, definitely the way to go however black played bishop to b5 first uh, he wants to prepare it but now we have rook to b6 attacking the bishop and now bishop back to e8 again uh, bishop to, to f1 to guard the e2 square definitely has um, uh, has its, uh, you know, uh, upsides. Uh, for example, king d2, we're going to play e3 check, and after king to e1, uh, we have to play bishop to c4. Unfortunately, uh, this pawn to e2 move doesn't really do all that much, because how are you ever getting this bishop back into the game? Uh, th there's not much uh, you, you can do here. The rook can always come to e6. You're not going to be able to bring the black king any closer. Uh, so what you would have to do after king e1 is something like bishop to c4, then Alireza would probably trade, and then we get this position where, you know, it's, it's pretty crazy, but, uh, you know, one would have to prefer black here. But okay, uh, after this uh, rook to b6, bishop to f1 was not played. Uh, we have bishop to e8, and now Alireza uh, has, uh, you know, uh, a, a lot more squares to operate with. King to d2 was played. We have e3 with check, king to e1, and now king to e4. And this is a beautiful move by black. Uh, black is saying here that, okay, you can give rook to e6 check and pick up my bishop, but what <laughs> what is black? really doing. Uh, Alireza played rook to e6 check, we have king to f3, and now you have this position where, you know, you might think, okay, we just blundered a piece, but uh, maybe, you know, maybe we haven't. Uh, feel free to pause the video here and try to find the only winning move for Alireza while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on not capturing the bishop. That would be, uh, you know, just losing. Uh, and for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, the move is knight to b3.
that's the good stuff. We have to be uh, ready to deliver knights to d4 check and, uh, to, uh, you know, just uh, win the e2 square for our king. That's the way it, uh, the, to win this position. The problem with capturing the bishop is just rook h7 and how are you defending uh, against checkmate? You can see that the pawn and king are covering all of these squares. Uh, there's no escape here. You would have to give up the rook and then, okay, this is just a winning endgame uh, for black. So Alireza, of course, played knight to b3. Now he's ready to deliver this. Now rook to h7 does nothing. We're just going to deliver knight to d4 check. And after the king moves, just rook captures an e3 with check. And that's it. We have a winning position. King f4. We're going to play rook captures an e8. Black loses a piece and there's no compensation here. So instead, after knight to b3, we have bishop to g6. And now comes knight to d4 check. Okay, the f5 pawn is protected, but uh, it doesn't really matter. King captures an g3. Rook captures an e3 with check. King captures an f4. And now uh, Alireza again has to figure out... Uh, can he trade rooks? For example, knight to e6 check, king captures and knight captures here. Not really. f4 is extremely strong and it wins the game uh, for black because you have to, you know, play f3, f2 check and the bishop can easily kick the king away from the f1 square. You know, white might even get checkmated here. So Alireza just plays king f2. He defends his own rook. Now is threatening knight to e6 check. Uh, so bishop to f7 and now knight to e2 with check. King g5. Rook to g3 with check, king to f6, and here Alireza just trades rooks. We have rook captures, king captures, and king to e3. And it was in this position on move 50 that Dimitrios Mastrovasilis resigned the game, as there is nothing more to be done here. The position is completely winning for white, and uh, I will just show you a couple of quick moves just to show you how completely hopeless the position is for black. For example, king f6, king d4. Uh, we can play king g5, try to get our king into the game. For example, king e5 doesn't really matter what you play. The point is that uh, the king and the knight uh, control, for example, these two squares, not that one. And uh, there's no way for black to make progress here. If king g4, we can just play a4. We start pushing our pawn. Yes, black can put the bishop somewhere to maybe help uh, out with... Uh, uh, the defense of the a8 square, uh, but we don't care. We just push b4, and after black wastes uh, some moves, we're going to play a7, for example, bishop back, bishop to b5, bishop b7, b6, bishop to a8, and now we bring the knight into the game. Now it doesn't matter what you play, for example, d4, if we capture, then we lose the knight, but just knight e6. And after bishop b7, we're going to play knight to c5, win the b7 square, bishop here, pawn here, and that's it. Like th There's absolutely nothing uh, black can even try here, even though he's down on only one pawn, but there is zero counterplay here. Uh, so yeah, another uh, impressive victory for Alireza, and you can see that there were a couple of moments where Black could have uh, played better, but it required some really, really shrewd maneuvering. He had to give up at least one pawn to, uh, for, for a lot of activity, and then he would have uh, fighting chances. He, he would never be like winning or anything, but he would definitely have fighting chances, and that's what you have to find. Uh, to, um, uh, you know, to play uh, 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 against uh, Alireza, but uh, uh, you know, he, he tried to uh, hold on to everything and it, it just didn't work out. So very impressive and, uh, you know, just from an, uh, from an equal endgame, uh, another victory for Alireza Firuja. And uh, yeah, he seems to be winning a lot of these, uh, you know, completely drawn endgames. But like I said, the endgames are completely drawn if both sides play the absolute best moves, which is almost never the case. And uh, what does this mean for... Uh, for the standings, well, just uh, for you to see here, uh, these are Alireza's uh, last six games. You can see that he uh, got five and a half out of six points. Uh, only Ivan Saric of Croatia got a draw in, in the second round. Uh, all the other games, uh, Alireza won. And this puts him uh, to a rating performance of over 3,000. Now, that's uh, a lot for, for any, any player to achieve. And uh, regarding the standings, as I know you guys are always interested in this, uh, here are the standings. So you can see Alireza firmly in third place. 27.96.3, uh, you know, uh, very, very close to, to Ding Liren, 2.7 points away. And there are three more rounds uh, in this tournament. So if Alireza continues this onslaught, he will overtake Ding and it will only be Carlsen left to, to dethrone. Uh, but, uh, you know, that's not going to happen anytime soon. Because even if, uh, for example, Magnus uh, loses all the games to Nepo in the World Chess Championship match now in November, uh, that's just going to mean that Nepo will become the, you know, maybe highest rated player in the world uh, uh, instead of Magnus. So whatever happens in that match, it doesn't really 
uh, matter all that much for um, uh, for for Alireza's placement uh, in the in the standings. Uh, but yeah, uh, all in all, uh, very impressive uh, end game. Uh, really, a really nice line that Alireza has chosen here. This that um, Grishuk chose against Nepo. This queen to d3 followed by queen to g3. You know, it's uh, it, it doesn't give you much, but it uh, you know gives you an interesting game where Black will have to think, and there there you know uh, isn't all that much background uh, on this. So that's uh, how he decided to to approach this. So just a nice equal position, and then we grind, sort of like. Uh, our good friend Bobby Fischer would do. Uh, but yeah, that's the game. Once again, hope you guys uh, enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to wish a very happy birthday to Zuza. I hope you had a great day and that you've spent it with uh, lots of friends and family and of course chess. Uh, and I would like to thank Michael Kennedy, Konstantinos Lampridis, uh, Rod Hill and Tudor Sharp for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching and I will see you soon continuing the coverage of this wonderful event, checking up on your wonderful suggestions and whatever else happens in the chess world. Uh, so thank you all, I will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day. The World Chess Championship starts in some six days. Uh, see you soon.